I spent the last 15 years of my life observing a creature we've known as SCP-6009. No one has ever thought to ask its name, but then again, only five people ever had the chance to speak it, all of which died shortly after the discussion. The first two were unrecorded interviews, and the content of these discussions won't ever be known, though we quickly learned that the deaths were directly caused by conversing with the creature itself. Once known, we sent in a team to set up cameras and microphones. The creature sat idly by as the team prepared everything, never attempting to engage the men in conversation. It's worth mentioning that each of the men sent inside had been deaf from birth, as each individual that went inside experiences an intense compulsion to ask the creature questions. But as we immediately learned during the next few sessions, there are questions that enrage SCP-6009, questions not meant to be answered. Our mission statement is to retrieve the answers to those questions and the questions themselves, but bringing the data back outside has proven to be more than just a difficult task. For reference, here's the transcript from the last recorded meeting, where I was simply working as Class D observer, an expendable worker doing little more than taking notes. I'd already taken part in two others. One subject had immediately died, and the second committed suicide shortly after the interview before being able to relay what they'd learned inside. Subject D-1783, Daniel Harris. Are you prepared to interview SCP-6009? Dr. Zelinsky asked. The subject nodded, his face pale white from what could only be utter horror. Neither of us had ever seen the creature that loomed inside the old classroom. We just knew that it had killed two people and that it wasn't human. So I just ask it a few questions and then I come back out? Subject D-1783 asked. Exactly. You've already been given the list of questions. Once you're done, leave the room. Do not ask any personal questions. Stick to the script. What happens if I mess up? He asked. SCP-6009 will remain friendly until you ask a wrong question. Any question not deemed safe might result in your death. Stick to the script and you'll be fine, Zelensky explained. The script was a collection of questions Zelensky had deemed safe after observing the little information we'd gotten out from the room intact. By some strange force of nature, most data ended up corrupted, including the one question that would always lead to the interviewer's death. With that, I turned on the camera stuck inside the classroom. It had been abandoned for the better part of a decade, concealing a creature that had never made any attempt at escape, nor did it seem to experience hunger, thirst, or boredom. It just sat in the front of the room. At first sight, it looked like a human dressed in a trench coat, wearing a large hat. It was looking down at the table, keeping its face hidden from the camera. How the creature ended up inside the classroom has remained unknown. From the little non-redacted parts of the document I'd read, it had suddenly appeared during a history lesson, killing the teacher as the children fled the room. Then it sat itself down and waited as the entire school got put into quarantine, led by the SCP Foundation. The subject walked inside, his hands trembling as he held onto the pile of papers. He'd only signed up because of his family. His kid needed urgent medical treatment that the foundation promised to provide after a quick job. Even with the high likelihood of death, the man was willing to risk it for his child. It made me despise the foundation more than I already did. But the thing about SCP is that once you join, you're in for life. Approach the desk, Zelensky said through the speaker systems. But what was emitted on the other side was little more than scrambled static noises. It wasn't unexpected. The room emitted extremely high levels of electromagnetic interference, meaning we'd struggle to keep live contact while the subject was inside. Still, the camera seemed unaffected. We had visuals, but no audio. Subject D-1783, respond, Zelensky ordered. Silence. He didn't seem worried nor surprised, but the protocol dictated that we always attempt to maintain contact with the subject inside. We were forced to helplessly watch as the subject sat down with SCP-6009. The creature lifted its head, finally revealing its face. Its head was weirdly oblong, without eyes, a nose, nor ears. All it contained was a sliver of an opening that resembled a mouth, with exceptionally thin, tall teeth. He opened his mouth and started to talk, letting out words we could hear. As he spoke, I could see rows upon rows of the thin teeth, counting upwards of 200. The creature seemed to smile, though if it was happy or had simply been created with anatomy resembling smiling, I didn't know. Then the subject asked his first question, one I hadn't been cleared to read. The entire script was classified for Class C personnel and below, 
with the exception of the few people actually going inside to converse with SCP-6009. Zelensky knew the audio wouldn't work, which remains the only reason why he allowed me to remain there as an observer. If you can get the audio working, I'll grant you access, he'd always stated, knowing it would be an impossible feat. For two hours, I sat in front of the monitor, watching them talk silently. I tried to reset the feed on numerous occasions, but always without success. Zelensky looked less worried. He was the only Class B personnel I'd ever seen enter the facility, and based on the few rumors I'd heard, he'd identified upwards of a dozen SCP entities. I can't get the audio working, doctor, I said nervously. That was to be expected. Just keep your eyes on the subject, he ordered. Another hour passed, and the subject kept getting more and more erratic. He was moving around on the chair, peeking behind himself as if expecting something to jump out from the dark corners. Even without measuring his vitals or hearing him, I could tell his breathing was getting more and more erratic. But then he suddenly froze in his chair. The creature's mouth widened, revealing even more teeth, but it didn't move from its chair. Instead, it looked back down at the desk, once again, obscuring its face. The subject fell to the ground as he wriggled around in panic. His face had been sealed off by skin, as if his facial features had never been there. He just lay on the ground, suffocating. I jumped off from my chair, ready to call the guards and rush inside to save him. But Zelensky ordered us to stand by. Do not approach them, he ordered. Do you want to end up like him? We stood back, knowing better than to go against the order of someone with his rank. All the while, the subject lay dying inside the room as the creature sat quietly in his chair. Once he'd stopped moving completely, a few tendrils shot out from under the desk. They wrapped themselves around the subject, seeming to melt his flesh, removing any evidence that the subject had even entered the room. The microphone and recorder both got swallowed up by the creature, but there was a secondary receiver in the room, which as always ended up with corrupt data. The creature sat back in its chair. Which question triggered it? I asked. We'll see, Zelensky responded calmly seemingly unaffected by the subject's death. Stay here, he continued as he walked towards the room. Protocol strongly dictated that we send a security team inside the room to retrieve the footage. But Zelensky just walked up to the door, ordered the guard to open it, and went inside. Doctor, what are you? I tried to get out, but he'd already gone inside. He walked up to the front of the classroom and stood in front of the creature. The creature lifted its head, but it wasn't smiling. Zelensky spoke a few words to it, but due to the lack of audio, I had no idea what they were. The creature frowned, but responded to the question, and Zelensky turned around to pick up the secondary receiver. With that, he came back outside, handed me the receiver, and told me to gather all non-corrupt data I could get my hands on. I just sat there in disbelief at what I had just seen, but the doctor seemed unfazed by the entire situation. What, what did you ask it? I stuttered. He gave me a cold look. I asked if it knew who I am, was all he said. And wh what did it say? I asked meekly. That's beyond your rank. I want the cleaned recording by the end of the day. Drop it off at the usual location, he ordered. Those were the last words Zelensky ever spoke to me. He never did send another subject, nor did he return in person. The recording I cleared up still remained a mystery. Though I was tasked with making it readable, I was by no means allowed to listen to the actual conversation. Whatever Zelensky learned from his own and the subject's question, he got what he wanted, but I remain here, observing the creature as it patiently awaits its next victim. It still hasn't made any attempts at escaping, nor do I think it ever will. SCP-6009 appeared as an abnormally tall man wearing a trench coat and a large hat serving to cover most of its face. It spends all its time sitting in the teacher's chair in the front of the classroom, only lifting its head when approached by a subject. The subject may ask the creature any question it desires and will get a truthful answer. However, there are certain forbidden questions that will ultimately result in the subject's death if asked. SCP-6009 emits a hereby unknown type of electromagnetic radiation, causing fatal interference with any audio equipment brought into the room. As such, no audio transmission has been possible. Local devices may be brought inside, but the data will inevitably end up corrupt with little recovery possible. Hey guys, thanks for listening. Be sure to subscribe to the podcast for more SCP stories like this one. You can also check out some more episodes from the SCP Experience podcast here. I'll see you in the next one.